peace. This is the how and why of it. First of all, we had to quit playing God. It didn't work. Next, we decided that hereafter in the drama of life, God was going to be our director. He is the principal. We are his agents. He is the father and we are his children. Most good ideas are simple. And this concept was the keystone of the new and triumphant art through which we pass to freedom. When we sincerely took such a position, all sorts of remarkable things followed. We had a new employer. Being all powerful, he provided what we needed if we kept close to him and performed his work well. Established on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves, our little plans and designs. More and more, we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. As we felt new power flow in, we enjoyed peace of mind. As we discovered we could lay, face life successfully, as we became conscious of his presence, we began to lose our fears of today, tomorrow, and the hereafter. We were reborn. All right, that's our reading for today. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you for being here. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, good. Bill Churchman and everyone else, Kerry, Florida. Nice to see you all. Paul, uh, yes, this is, <clears throat> like they, all of them are, this is a very good reading. Let's go over it here. So that this is the how and why of it. That's pretty comprehensive. First of all, first, we had to quit playing God. So obviously, the assumption here is something's playing God. Let's not... I don't think it's us, but let's say something is definitely playing God. And maybe if you see it as not you, you'll uh, lose interest in what it's saying. That's the whole uh, logic that unwound by reverse engineering when it was clear that self, in my sense, represented something foreign to us. Uh, like a mental parasitical movement or demonic possession, whatever you want to call it. But as long as it's imaged as other, a possibility of being free from it becomes available. And then you realize you've been trying to be free as it most of your life. Nah. And a lot of other stuff you realize. And uh, basically, you outgrow an old understanding and you grow into a new understanding, which is we are not that which plays God. And by seeing that, I would say in this role of what's playing God and God, we're more the God role than the playing God. So without us knowing it, our God-like juice, so to speak, gets put to a mental activity and to an interpretation of life in, uh, that's not uh, emphasizing the living of life. It's emphasizing the one who's living life. And therefore the verbing of life gets lost. And now we, li we listen to a story about being a noun that's doing or not doing tons of stuff and so on and so forth. And so the sense of self, because it's produced, has to constantly be reproduced. So did you ever wonder why your head is so obsessive? Because it has to be. It has to obsess over this idea of self to reinforce the idea of self. Something that isn't so, to appear to be so, has to have a lot of work involved. Something that is so, which is our nature, I would say, a spiritual one, uh, doesn't need much advertising because it's it is it's it <laughs> it's basically that's the beauty of AA because once the uh, first of all we had to quit playing God it didn't work next we make a decision to turn our own life over to the care of something greater than ourselves hopefully with a fire that was uh, really a blaze after you realized that something had done for you what you couldn't do for yourself concerning sobriety considering active addiction is so so dominant to be relieved of that where all these other human powers were hoping for that to occur but they couldn't produce that effect something now has produced that effect 
I mean, that's a living flame that to me lights up the rest of the uh, program. So the third step is a decision to turn our will and life over to the care of something else. And they used to use the archway of freedom, which is the keystone would be the stone that everything else relies upon. But actually the prior uh, point, which is quit playing God to me is the most important recognition. First, see what's playing God and then not stop calling it you, really. And so, because if you try to quit playing God, as we share quite a lot, uh, <laughs> that's playing God. Yeah, so You can't quit playing God as that which is playing God. It would just constantly, it would be ad infinitum, that which is playing God, trying to quit playing God. So you have to see that which is playing God as something other than you. I don't see how it works any other way, really. Because any other way is going to be caught in the net of self, can't get out of self. So if you're identified as the problem and you're seeking to uh, escape the problem, that's part of the problem. Yeah, that's a big part of the problem. So... Fundamentally, everything hinge in my sense, everything hinges on the recognition of the exact nature of the wrong, which is an act of being identified as something that we're not. Yeah. And that act of ident being identified as something that we're not, we're not doing that. The head is doing it. The head talks to us as us. It assumes what's listening is it. What's talking is it, it's just uh, self, self all the time. So self can't get out of self. Then how are you going to get out of it? Yeah. If the only way you can work on that mechanism is I'm in something, self, and I want to get out of it, just like I'm in a like hot room and I want to get out of it. So then I walk out of that hot room into the cool day and I have relief, it's worked. But this is some fundamentally different. You're the room you want to get out of. You're identified as the room you want to get out of. Thank God you're not the room. So you're identified as the room you want to get out of. So when you get out of the room, all the qualities of the room come with you. It's just, it's a, it's a stubborn, freaking persistent mistake we're in that the mistake itself can undo itself. Yeah, self can't get out of self. So recognizing that which is playing God is in us is a pretty damn good start. Then getting into the spirit of the program, which is a reliance on something greater than ourselves, and then start doing the working steps four through nine to initiate that transfer from trusting something finite into trusting something infinite. Yeah, that's the, perhaps that's the better way. So the whole point we feel like uh, why we come back every week is to put out this information concerning the exact nature of the wrong. I don't want to go over every second, every period, every comma of this about the solution. That's already in place. I think the diagnosis is wrong. Yeah, I do. I do not believe we're the manufacturer of our own misery. I don't. I do not believe that we are the problem. I don't. Yeah, I believe there's a phase where we have to look at it that way. But that phase is in the beginning of recovery. As you recover, you stop calling self's manifestations yours and you recognize them as a foreign agents. And therefore, instead of walking around with tons of resentments called yours, with different ages and 50 years ago, just five minutes ago, you see resentments are a point of view. They're based out of looking at life from a very self-centered point of view. And therefore, if the view changes, what gets produced through that view will change. You can't keep hoping you're going to produce new views from the same thing that's projecting the old views. It's just going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So 
I love inventories because hopefully they'll lead you to not having to do too many inventories. That's the point, to outgrow inventory, to outgrow a lot of this stuff because now you're like a free-range alcoholic. You're relieved of the bondage of self today. And then you get on with the day. Yeah? Instead of using the day to try to get relief from the bondage of self, you're using the day to express the relief from the bondage of self. I'm freaking tired of trying to get out of self for self. It doesn't s sustain itself. It's just you get a feeling, you believe, oh, I'm out of self, and then you're right back in it again, on and on. Yeah, this is not about I'm going to spend this day breaking the bondage of self. No, I'm going to, you know, spend this day expressing the relief from the bondage of self. Because I have had the relief from the bondage of self. The problem does not exist as me anymore. Some days it may exist for me, but it never exists as me anymore. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, uh, hey, if you've tried everything else, you know, if you tried the 12 step married with Tantra or freaking, you know, yoga and then hyperventilating and then doing the third step in a chant with tons of people and you've done all this stuff, maybe just maybe this will work for you. Yeah, because it's not about the exact nature of the right. It's about the exact nature of the wrong. Yeah, you're going to find out about the exact nature of the right. It's you, hopefully. Yeah, you're going to find out the exact nature of the wrong is not you. Instead of having them mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> it's just simple. I've been entertaining it now for, let's say, 27 years of the sobriety. First, I was given the gift of sobriety. And then that gift brought about a lot of other gifts. And one of them was recognizing the exact nature of the wrong. Yeah. And here we are, 34 years going. I have to completely admit, for years and years and years, I have had, I've never had a strong feeling or thought where the problem resides, yeah, about using or drinking. So the problem actually has not existed for me, yeah. They may have needed a whole lot of recovery from the effects of the problem, but there was no need to recover from the problem anymore. That has been solved, yes. Yeah. Now I get rehab. Now I get reconditioned. Now I get renovated. Now I get put to better use or whatever. But it's very, very clear uh, that which is playing God is not me. Yeah. Very clearly. I believe the exact nature of the wrong is an act of being identified as self, which is completely promoted, reinforced assumed, historically verified through the mental activities. Yeah, The problem resides in the mind and the problem is an activity called selfing, really. Yeah. So when you stop calling it you, there's a, there's a possibility of being free from it. If you keep calling it you, you're going to try to be free as it. How has that worked? Yes. Have you really reha rehab self? It seems to be very, very pernicious. It doesn't seem you're not going <laughs> to, it doesn't become a pet, you know. It's got a nature of a snake, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. I call my snake rope now. It's quite useful. No, it's going to hang you sooner or later. Yeah, it's a snake. So, <clears throat> yep. I'm happy to be here. Uh, let's explore the possibilities of that, yeah? Let's explore why is quit playing God premised as the first major idea? And next in this drama of life is the third step principle, yeah? In a linear process, first would be more important than next, or it would be more essential, let's say, than next, yeah? So first is quit playing God. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful 
because that's going to be a heavy chore where you could get relieved of recognizing you're not playing God, so you don't even have to quit it. Yeah, you just see it as something other than you because it sure hasn't worked us trying to quit playing God, has it? <laughs> it hasn't worked that well. So maybe how you, what else can you do? You can only see it as you're not playing God. Hopefully, I don't see any other way out. Yeah, obviously self can't do it. Yeah. So, yep. Happy to be back. Hopefully we'll be uh, <clears throat> getting in the groove now. And uh, yeah, we'll have meetings every other day, whatever it is. Yep. Thanks. Anyone have a, yeah. Who's running the show, Michael? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Paul. Yeah. We have Tuesdays every Tuesday and Thursday at 1030 Pacific Standard Time. And if you have any hand, if you have any questions for Paul today, please use the hand, raise the hand feature uh, answered. And um, uh, so I don't see any hands up right now, Paul. You got Rob. Oh, you got Rob. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Rob. I didn't see you there. You're up at the top of my screen. Go ahead, Rob, please. That's all right. I'm Rob. I'm an alcoholic. Uh, this might be a quick answer. So I've said this before. I've, when I listen to music in my car and I start hearing the words and it's usually I, I always thought it was because I had cleaned up my past and all this stuff. And before I couldn't hear any of the words. So right now I'm in a monastery and I've been coming here on and off for 20 years. And there's like 40 monks here, right? And they sing every, like five times. There's five uh, masses a day. Let's just say that. And they sing. And every time I've come here, dude, I've never heard. It just sounds like a mumble. So yesterday I'm sitting in, 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 the, uh, in the chair and listening. And oh, my God. I heard the words. I heard every fucking word, dude. And, I, and it's unexplainable. I, I don't get it, dude. I mean, is it the chatter in my head that? stops me from hearing the words because when 40 dudes sing you know there's a rhythm in there and and i sat there I'm, i started crying dude because i heard every word they said and it blew my mind and i was just wondering what how you can answer that is it the chatter in the head the self-talking never stopping whatever whatever or is it something else uh that's all i got yeah, brief. something else so basically perhaps there's a better way a better way allows you to hear the words, yeah? Yeah, you become more, let's say, instead of becoming self-aware, you become aware of self. So in that, it opens up a lot of sense of silence and other stuff, yeah? You start hearing a lot more, you start feeling a lot more, you start uh, seeing a lot more, yeah. In other words, you're... You never knew you were, had an HD TV, so to speak. Yeah. So now the HD is playing. <laughs> That's all. It's huge, really. You go to one channel and its playlist is different than the other channel. Yeah. So you've lost interest in self that means you're going to gain interest. And so part of gaining interest as an example in your life was you finally heard the words these people were chanting the whole time. Yeah, finally. That's a, that's a demonstration of F, losing interest in self. This is what you've gained. Yeah. And understanding that you didn't have before. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. If something rushes in and tells you about everything before you find out, when that shifts and you just start finding out about shit, it's quite different than what the other, you know, radio station was telling you how things were. It was quite bogus, most of its information. Most of its information is false evidence yeah, being presented as if it's real. Yeah, so now you have some discernment and now things are happening. So 
First you get your contacts, you now see something, now you're hearing the words, yeah. Mm -hmm. The senses are coming alive. <laughs> yes, this is part of it. Remember, I always used to have this feeling of when I would do a share, everything was heightened. If I would go out to eat, the food was unbelievably delicious and I could hear silence and everything and just kept getting, and at first, because the contrast was so uh, extreme, it was a it was a remembered experience. But after a while, it becomes the norm. You know, it's just like mm. something's buzzing inside you all the time. Silence is super loud, but in a lovely little way. All this stuff becomes the new norm. Yeah. Yeah. See, when you it says we outgrow shit. Uh, it didn't have time to really describe what we're going to grow into. That's our experience of being sober. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're like, uh, we're the second, uh, we're the second book. We're the living second book of recovery. So now what happens when you outgrow some of the old shit? Well, here you go. You start out, you start finally understanding what people are saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, true. I remember I had a guy who ran into me, and I used to do this saying from a, an old cryptic spiritual saying, which is, the seeker is the sort. So this guy had heard it as, the seeker is the sword. Yeah, and he would just, for eight years, he was wondering, what the fuck does that mean? The seeker is the sword. You know what I mean? So he finally ran into me, and he says, hey, What's with that statement? The seeker is the sword. I said, no, it's the sort. S O U G H T, and it cleared everything up for him in a second. Oh, man. That's awesome. <laughs> this is what happens with us. Yeah, um, it may not come through another person. It may just happen when you're alone. <laughs> Finally, right. you realize the word. It was sought. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that old the old joke about the uh, monastery and the abbot and the new he comes in and he has one of the monks who's the librarian go start retranslating all the you know the texts or the scriptures mm -hmm. and the guy had did it about eight months before and he's saying hey listen no the guy goes the new guy goes you got to write do it so he's working down below and then he runs into a word and he has this huge revelation. And he runs up to the abbot's room and knocks on the door, wakes him up, and he says, the word was celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Not celebrate. <laughs> it, changed, it changed everything. <laughs> oh, no. That's awesome. So, yeah. Uh, so, and for you today, it's celebrate. <laughs> I like celebrate. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. Right, thanks, yeah. All right, thank you, Rob. Next, we Listen, have Terry. You're not going to be able to hear the new music if you're still devoted to the old station. Yes, the old station is golden oldies. It just keeps replaying the same shit. It's not gonna. <laughs> Maybe it's music of the 80s or whatever. You can't fucking throw one new song in there. So, but when you lose interest in the one station, you start lose, gaining interest in the other stations and you pick up other shit. Yeah. Yeah. You can't pick up shit from the station. The radio can, but the, the 80s station can't pick up new shit. It's the 80s station. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same old, same old. But the radio can turn to another channel for fucking sure. And in our case, something actually dials us in. Yeah. And when we're leaving the one channel, it's seen as I'm losing interest in that. And then there's gaining interest in the new channel. And now instead of being directed by the great golden oldies of the 80s, you're being directed by... What's happening right now? Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Why can't I get it? Because you can't get it. Yeah? You're programmed to play this, this not even the hits, the B-sides of the 80s. <laughs> That's all you program. It's all about you. <laughs> Why can't I? You can't. It doesn't work. Yeah? You just lose interest in it because you stop seeing it as yours or you, and then you start picking up sta other stations. Yeah? Yeah. So. That's incredible, man. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you're a radio. You're not a, you're not a, uh, a, you're not a radio station. You're a radio. You pick up a lot of transmissions. Yeah. This whole idea of, you know, <laughs> we're looking at ourselves as the radio, but we're really been listening to a station. Yeah. Self. K Paul, all freaking day. Yeah? The radio can pick up another thing. That station can't. It's all K Paul all the time. It can't change. Yeah? So you stop trying to dial it in with some new fandangled idea of mixing drugs with sobriety or whatever and just give it up. Yeah? The 80s station ain't going to change. <laughs> it's not going to again enter in, into the ambient music phase. It, it just goes back to the same old shit. Yeah. But where, as a radio, as being used, as having a new employer, we can, we can be tuned into a lot of fucking channels. Yes. But not as the station, not as the K Paul. It's severely limited. Everything becomes K Paul. <laughs> yeah. You don't blame the radio for the music that's being played. Yeah. It's it isn't the, it's not writing out the playlist. Its job is to is to receive and express, yeah? We're, we're meant to be used, so to speak. The mental state is attempting to use us, and the spiritual state could, could use us, yes? It's just basically what master do you serve? Yeah? Perhaps there's a better way. It doesn't say trusting the infinite and the finite self. No. It says stop trusting the finite self and trust the infinite. It isn't both, yeah? You don't, oh, I completely trust the finite self and I trust the, no, that doesn't work. Yeah. It's the, the better way means they're different ways. Yeah. Well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to trust the finite self until it can, until it can trust the infinite. It's, a, it can't. Yes. It will always put itself above something else. Yes. Yeah. I mean, some of us have tried for years, yeah? Some of us wrote tons of books, and just when we most needed the understanding that book offered, it would be escape us while we put our foot in our mouths once again, yeah? You know, ruining a relationship or shit like that. How long is it going to go on? I'm done, dude. I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, great. So, perhaps there's a better way. Trust in the infinite rather than finite self. That's a moment to moment affair, really. Yeah. And it's there's all value in everything because if you keep trusting the finite self, you're going to learn that way, hopefully. Yeah. That it's not reliable, hopefully. Hopefully we've all hit that point already. And then if you trust the infinite instead of the finite self, you see, you'll see that life works better. Yeah. So even when things fail, they succeed. Because how can, what can a failed system show you? It's failed. How many times do you need to see it before it gets to be abusive in a sense? Yes.
<clears throat> yeah. That's what will happen in the book. You'll read, if you have a sense of what we're saying here, as Kurt has shared in the past, when you now look at the word self in the in the big book, it will trigger something else than it used to. It won't it trigger a sense of the, oh, that's me. You'll see it as other, yeah? And then when it's self, we've suffered from self-imposed something, we'll see that we weren't imposing that, self was imposing that, yeah? That the old employer was imp imposing its rules on us, yeah? So now we have a new employer. Yeah. It's fundamentally different. Yeah. Hmm. All right, anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, hey, we have Gary. Come on in, Gary. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for your service. And welcome back, Paul. Um, although it was nice to be able to participate a little bit in your adventures with through videos, I, I, I find often that when I just go and, you know, YouTube suggests a certain video and I listen to it, it's like, great, wow, that, I sure needed that re little reminder. Anyway, um, I, I was just, uh, it just occurred to me as you were talking that, you know, the word you, like when you're talking, you say you, and I just noticed this mental process of which, you know, 99% is about itself, but it's not itself. Anyway, that this mental process says, oh, he's talking about me. And I saw that, you know, claiming and went, had to laugh. It's like, oh, you think that's about you, don't you? And it, it was funny in that moment. Thank God it was funny. Yeah. Because there was a seeing of that claiming in the moment. Yeah. So, you know, thank you for that. Wherever it comes from. Yeah. Yes, it's almost like uh, a moment-to-moment <clears throat> moment reclaiming territory. <laughs> yeah. 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 You don't you don't recognize this the assumed sovereignty of self anymore. <laughs> you don't. You step on the in. border. Don't go this. Don't go. No, I'm gonna. You know. You just keep stepping out. And you see what happens, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, somehow come into the meeting. You know what it's oh. like to be directed. You've been directed so much by the head. Yeah? Yeah. Now you're going to be directed by whatever you want to call it, the heart or just anything, your gut. Yet, yet the basis is directed. We're directed, yeah? Mm -hmm. We rely on shit to tell us what's going on. We do. We wake up, we don't have a fucking clue usually. And then something informs us based on its own knowledge, yeah? And basically we end up relying on it and it's proven to be unreliable, yeah? But we think that's the only way to be directed by thought. No, it isn't. We can be directed by, let's say, spirit. Yeah? Yeah, that's news. It doesn't have to be, <laughs> something doesn't have to say it to us. Yeah? It can inform us in different ways. The intuitive thought, whatever this, the, that energetic hunch. And now you start being, you're always going to be directed, but you're going to be directed by a different force. And you'll be able to tell the difference after a while. So when the old employer keeps trying to act like the new employer, you'll recognize it. 
Yeah. Yeah. You'll see the yeah. false evidence. You'll see the emperor with no clothes. So basically, you outgrow that old way and you grow into this new way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And now you live life just like you were before. There's a living of this event, but you travel lighter through it. Yes. Yeah. And really, basically, uh, that's all the evidence you need in in this case. Yeah. 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 Once you start being directed clearly, it's easy to tell when you're not being directed clearly. Yes. You start yeah. being able to recognize the old station trying to break into the new station and sell you the same old golden oldies again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you outgrow it and you've grown into another condition. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to fit back in the old shell after having. Who wants to? It was no. Fun, uh, <laughs> so, so that's the biggest. The thing is, you lose interest in all, you know. I don't really want to be alone and right. It just doesn't work that well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, once you get a different taste of something, uh, yeah. Yes. It does all the convincing. Yeah. Yeah. When something works, it's quite convincing after a while. Yeah. You don't need constant reassurance from the head. You just know things are right. Yeah, yeah. It takes a bit of adjustment. There's a, like. Well, that's, we have a way of life for that. We have a yeah. design for living <clears throat> for those adjustments to be made. And we learn we can face life successfully. Of course, there needs <clears throat> the action figure needs to be adjusted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, its knob has to be oiled and have it move a little because it keeps pled pledging allegiance to the old radio station. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a groove there. Yes, but yeah. there's a deeper groove. I've been sober longer than I ever used. Yeah. On one level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been sober longer. So the groove of recovery is deeper than the groove of addiction, active addiction. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So there's nothing to rely on back there. I've been, yeah, I've been in the, uh, perhaps there's a better way longer than I, in the older way. At least the oh, active yeah. aspect of it, the active addiction. Yes. Way past. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess the thing that trips me up is sometimes I go, well, okay, now that this understanding is clear in a moment, so now I want to go back and, you know, wake the sleeping dog up and train him how to do it right now. And, and well, it never is, works. So, but that's the old employer acting like a new employer. You yeah. have the eyes to see that. So, yeah. So what? Because, the thing is, yeah, it would be nice if it would leave finally and never, never seem to appear again, but it's, that's not its nature. It keeps showing back up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You just, uh, your lack of interest in it is, is what it's the doorman that leads it back out. Yes. It's when you get yeah. engaged then it sits around for some tea and shit and starts telling you how much it's missed you and everything else. <laughs> yeah. you just want it to be ushered out it's got one kick you know getting kicked out once won't work it just keeps coming back <laughs> so just uh, yeah it's you know it gives it gives you know you you provide a livelihood for the doorman so that's nice you know you just will you please escort him out again <laughs> you just keep mm. escorting them out yeah you've got a job <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then obviously it doesn't, it's showing up, gets, there's long periods of time where it doesn't show up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Of course, those aren't remembered much. <laughs> No, but the only thing no. that's remembered is, is it's last time it showed up. Yeah. Yeah. You've been free much more than you've been bound over these years. I'll tell you right mm -hmm. now, watching people here, some of us are the last ones to know it. We keep listening to this narrative. Yeah. That the fear of going back is as if you are there. No, you're not. You're fucking be free from this bondage of self. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to f live under the fear of it, the weather front returning. Yeah. Seriously, enjoy the sun. Mm. Yeah, cool. you're in the light. Yeah. But I may not be. You know, it's just... It's just <laughs> that's a I'm feeling really great, but, but don't worry. I'm still as crazy <laughs> as ever. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not as crazy as ever. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. just not. <laughs> yeah. None of that, that old stickum works. The post-it just falls off the refrigerator. There's nothing, nothing to adhere to. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so cool. thanks Paul yeah great thank you thank you Gary okay up next Paul we have Dennis, Dennis you know you one thing some of us never saw the shit coming in it's always been assumed to be in the living room already yeah at least now you have the eyes to see it as something foreign that has to enter into your life. It doesn't reside there. It doesn't, res it doesn't own the house. Yeah, it's a guest. You're the resident. Most of us has, has lived as if it's been us. I mean, give us a break. A huge revelation has happened through this Zoom. People have seen what they used to look from. Really, it's an incredible gift. You now see what you used to look from all freaking day. Yeah. What you were waiting with bated breath to hear the, the interpretation of your life from, the head. You're not doing that now. More has been revealed. See, this whole point isn't getting another technique to get out of something. Is realize it's not in the house. Yeah? It hasn't entered. You entertain it. You. If you lose interest in it, it will be as if it's not there because it's not there without your interest. How are you going to lose interest in it if you keep calling it you? You can't. You see it as something other than you, and then there's a loss of interest in, and now you're more interested in living in the house than you are in having a story about what's going to enter at any man minute. Yeah? You could, you, really. All the, you know, the bars are keeping you in. It's not keeping anything out. The bars on the window is a for, another form of being bound to self. It's not keeping anything out. Yeah. It's keeping you in. So this is simple. You, are, you were... And you are and you will be something before you ever thought of what you were. Way, yeah, yeah. That was like a minor little interruption 
of head activity. It hasn't changed a damn thing. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. All right, bro. Thanks. 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 All right. All right. Thank you, Gary. All right, Paul, we have Dennis up next. One in, Dennis. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. And I do so much appreciate this format and this perspective on the program. You know, really. I know, like, I, I know early on I was looking elsewhere. Because, but I did recognize like how solid this new life was. Um, so it's interesting because you were talking about we have this <clears throat> plan of living. And yesterday I was able to make an amends that's like 40 years old. And I wanted to for a long time. And if the opportunity actually presented itself when I was with my first wife where I got sober with and, and then I wasn't able to do it. So, you know, it's like things, and I know intuitively, and I think you were talking about that too. I know intuitively that things happen when they need to happen and people come in when they need to come in and there you go. But because I wanted, I got together with my sponsor and we looked at like relationship stuff <clears throat> Because as a result of continuing to work the steps, um, then this thing materialized. And it certainly wasn't what I expected it to be. Because from the self perspective, it's going to turn into this like Cinderella, Hollywood, Prince Charming romance, you know, <laughs> not even close. But we had we just we talked all day. I haven't seen her for 40 years. So we talked all day and, and she gave me such tremendous insight into how I function relationship wise. You know, I started doing CODA about three years ago because that's a real sick part, you know? And, and I love the fact that you go back to, it's, you know, it's from the self's perspective where the damage comes from. And like of recent, I've been, I, for some reason I've been able to find some separation and I can't even like name what it would look like as a technique, but it's just a freaking gift. It is a tremendous gift. Um, and I, you know, I listen to a lot of Ramana Harshi's YouTube like talks and there's a point in there where he talks about, you know, the guru is outside and inside. And at some point, it starts working from the inside, you know? Yeah. And, it, and it's not like, it's not like, you know, it's all solid and it's all done and it's just blissful. You know, yesterday was freaking painful, man. I got home and I had to sit in the emotional stuff. Well, I didn't have to, I chose to sit in the emotional stuff and kind of let it filter out and then spoke with my sponsor. We had a really good talk and, you know, I'm just so grateful that I've had a relationship with this guy for such a long period of time. And it's almost like we're brothers on this spiritual path. And it's not like sponsor, sponsee. It's just incredible. But your format, you know, sometimes I go into Zoom AA meetings and it's painful. It's hard to, you know, navigate through some of the verbiage and some of the, you know, and maybe like what you're talking about is looking at it from the the true self and I, I have no idea i don't know but anyway it's really nice to come in here and to share this specifically with you you know i i love your perspective i've visited your stuff for a lot of years so thanks for that well great thank you and thanks for sharing yep
Anyone else, Mike? No, no. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you for bringing that in. Uh, no, Paul, we have no other questions. Uh, no, anybody else have a question for Paul today? Okay, that's, that's all we have for today, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, bro. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for the uh, privilege to sit with all of us. Yeah, it's great. Lebowski, what is it you want to say? I, I wasn't going to say anything, but um, now that you've called on me, <laughs> uh, no, I was just waving and, 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 and it's just, I really felt y'all's absence. You know, I need this repetition and I'm one of those people that once this thing came online, I was a happy camper because I've been listening to your videos for a long time. But self keeps working its way back in, you know, and I need just those little reminders. Uh, I don't know what it is about the simplicity of the language you use, but it just reminds me that I've um, been real busy doing nothing. <laughs> I've been real busy with something that turns out to be nothing. And uh, it, it's just, you know, and then it's no big deal. So um, hey, I don't know. I don't know what to say except thanks. James, well, thank hey, James. you, first of all. Yes, sir. I've always been happy to see you. Hey, you know how easy it is just to be reminded and because you're not, you never leave the vicinity of that neighborhood anymore. Yeah? You know what I mean? Before, you'd have to do tons of stuff to start trying to feel okay. Now you hear a little I bit fall. of a thing. And it works, yes? I fall. Based on your condition, yeah? Yeah. I fall. Yes, and, hey. and I travel lighter because of it. I fall. Hey. I yeah. fall. I'm sorry. <laughs> I fall. <laughs> and she loves Paul, too. She, she, she's a, she's a header bro. <laughs> I but no, I come on, I hear the just the right I thing, and I'm traveling lighter. And who knows how I long? Fall. Who knows how long? I'll take I it. Fall. <laughs> I also I like fall. being reminded of the fact that I probably travel I light. Fall. I'm not going to compete with it. I, I, I love you guys. I fall. I, I fall. I fall. <laughs> yes. All right. That made my day. So, yeah. Can you imagine, like, before to change something, it would cost you about 500 bucks, cocaine and everything else. Now you just listen for four minutes and it, yes, it's nice, very nice. Something that was an impossibility is quite easy now. It's great. All right, well, let me say goodbye to everyone. Oh, there's Kathleen and uh, Mr. B, Churchman. I miss all you guys. And uh, to miss oh, Bill is to miss a lot of a person, man. He's, he's a rather large man all right well dennis thanks for your share and thanks for uh yeah i'm glad you got back <laughs> yeah yes we just uh i'm chilling out it was a 24-hour uh <laughs> uh pilgrimage from italy back here so all right michael stacy thank you for all the service as always Tom, nice to see you up in Washington. Yes. John S. in Florida. Kerry, Hawaii, he made it home. Yeah. Gail, uh, the pink cloud. There she is. I think I saw you when I was flying. <laughs> you probably did. <laughs> I saw you duck under a bit of cloud when I was looking out the window. That's Welcome how I saw back. you. I Welcome saw you, back. Gail. Okay. I'm, okay. Uh, <laughs> Stefan on having never left. Fantastic. Gary C. Always. Chris, nice to see you again. A new Tim. Also, we're going to be doing a talk today, 4.30 Pacific time. It's on the website with this Awakening Together group. We're going to start that up again. That's 4.30 Pacific time. On uh, It's on the website. So we got Tim, nice to see you. Lucas, Jacob, Seattle, you feeling all right, Jacob? All's well? Good. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I've declared with the group, but I'm officially in remission, Paul. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. Now you're, you're in remission from self and from something else. That's good. That's right. Right. That's good. Yeah. Joseph. Nice to see you, Joseph. France. Tommy. I was just in Paris Sunday at the airport. It was raining like crazy. Yeah. Uh, we got Tommy. We got Walter from the Netherlands. We got James. And uh, you got to teach her another word than Paul there, James. So we got uh, Alex from the Hudson Valley. Nice to see you, Alex. Kaiser. Nice to see Kaiser again. Anu. Love to use the word. We were there together, I think, in Italy. Very nice. Uh, let's see. We've got Annette, Susanna W., Senna, Gil, Dennis, Mickey. There she is. Karen. Or, uh, ah, nice to see you there. Oliver from Berlin, Rob S, Louisville, Roman, my, uh, my, uh, Italian brother. Nice to see you, Roman. <laughs> uh, we were through a lot, my friend. It was sort of fun. All right, everyone. Hey, thanks. I'll see some of you later and, uh,